Hello, good day to one and all. This is Ms. A. Krishna Sundar, Assistant Professor, Department of English, KAHM Unity Women's College, Mancheri. Today we would be discussing the paper Appreciating Drama with its first module, Part 1. So I would be giving you a very brief introduction to the paper along with the explanation for a few terms. So let us begin by distinguishing the two terms that we come across in our daily life, drama and theatre. So now the question here is, are they one and the same? And the answer is a big no. Though we use these terms on an interchangeable pattern, they are very different from each other. Because drama is actually the script, which is a written part, whereas theatre is something that is connected with performance or something that is related with staging a drama, staging a play. So drama and theatre, they are two different words with two different meanings. So moving on to a general introduction, when we talk about drama, the history of drama begins from Greece. And most of the definitions and terms that we still use in drama today actually comes from Aristotle, the great Greek philosopher, and his book titled as Poetics. So Poetics is considered as one of the most important books in literature, which speaks about the origin and different aspects of drama. Poetics consists of 26 chapters and 45 pages. A number of pages have been lost and today we are depending on a few translation works related to poetics because it has been suggested that the original work was lost during the Middle Ages. So getting into an introduction with Aristotle. Aristotle was a Greek philosopher whose writings still influence us today. He was the first to write about the essential elements of drama more than 2000 years ago. While ideas have changed slightly over the years, we still discuss Aristotle's list when talking about what makes the best drama. So coming to the origin of the terms. The term drama actually comes from the Greek word dran. Now dran means to do or to act. And the term theater comes from theatron. And theatron means a seeing place. So I'm going to take you through a couple of pictures for you to understand how drama existed thousands of years before. Now, this is known as a theatre of Dionysius. Now, this is again in Greece. So, this is a painted picture. Now, you can see the real picture, the original picture, where the drama is performed, the staging is done. And you can see the huge crowd of people who could occupy the number of seats present over here. So, this is again the same theater from a different angle. So getting into the history of drama and performance, it is basically connected with Dionysius, the Greek god. And that is why it is known as the theater of Dionysius. Now Dionysius was a god of wine in Greek mythology. And most of the ancient plays were enacted during the Feast of Dionysius, which means most of the educational institutions, maybe not the way we find educational system today, but still those systems which worked at that time were completely closed during the celebration week. Many other offices are also closed. Even prisoners would be released from the prison to watch these plays which are going to be enacted. So this was a part of celebration and most of the plays were actually enacted during this Feast of Dionysius. So moving on to the origin of drama and the classifications, drama is basically divided into two 
One is tragedy and the other one is comedy. Now, definitions were given by Aristotle thousands of years ago in his book titled as Poetics. If you look at the kind of writers that existed in Greece, there were two kinds of writers. Now, the first kind were the writers who wrote about serious subjects. And then there were writers who wrote about light or frivolous kind of subjects. Now, those writers who wrote about serious subjects mostly wrote hymns, which were actually in praise of God, which got evolved into epics. And finally, these epics got transformed into what we call as tragedy today. Meanwhile, those writers who focused on light subjects, these writings became satires and these satires got transformed into comedy later. So this is how tragedy and comedy evolved. So now let us look at the definition of a tragedy. Tragedy is a form of drama in which Events lead to the downfall of the main character, often a person of great significance like a king or hero. So this is what happens in tragedy and in most cases, tragedy will end in suffering and death. The tragic hero will possess a weakness and you call this weakness as tragic flow. Now, please remember these terms because tragic flow is a term that you have to learn by heart when you learn this paper. So, tragic flow means it is a kind of defect in the main character or the protagonist. Now, this is not a huge defect. This is a kind of weakness as you can call it. So, as human beings, we all commit certain kind of blunders in our life. So, this is something like that. And this is not a deliberate kind of action. Something happens from the part of the main character and this creates the problem in tragedy. Now, this creates the downfall of the main character. I would like to give you an example from a movie titled as Kiridam, which is a Malayalam movie which was released in the year 1989, if my memory is right. Now, Mohanlal is a main hero who plays the role of Sedu Madhavan. He is the son of a police officer and the police officer is Tilagan. So, Sedu Madhavan is actually waiting to be appointed as a police officer and the father has got a lot of dreams in his son. But unfortunately, one day when he finds a criminal attacking his own father, he interferes and finally he kills this criminal. Now this was not a deliberate action from the part of the hero. If you look at the character of the hero, Sedu Madhavan, he is a normal guy who leads a normal life. But this impulsive action, this action which was spurred in one moment, changes everything in his life. It changes the entire life of his family members. So someone who was destined to become a police officer is now imprisoned in the jail as a criminal. So everything is changing here. So if you look at this example, this is the best example for a tragic hero because just an impulsive action which changed the entire fate of that family. So this is what you call as tragic flow. Now, as a result, he loses everything. Sedu Madhavan, the character, he loses his lover. And that role is played by Parvati in the movie. He loses his job. He loses his family. Everything is lost and he suffers. So this is what you call as a tragic flow, a kind of a defect, a very minor defect, but which will be having a great lot impact or repercussion in the coming future. So moving on to the definition of tragedy as it is given by Aristotle, this is how Aristotle defines tragedy. Tragedy is an imitation of an action that is serious, complete and of a certain magnitude, that is size. In language, embellished. Embellished means a language which is very flowery in its nature. With each kind of artistic ornament, in the form of action, not of narrative, 
with incidents arousing pity and fear. So please remember this is very important with a tragedy. If you are watching a tragedy, this tragedy should create a kind of pity and fear in you wherewith to accomplish its catharsis of such emotion. So now I would like to give you the meaning of the term catharsis. Catharsis is a purgation of emotion. The purgation means it is a release of emotions. Now Plato that is Aristotle's teacher. Now, Plato was totally against this purgation of emotions because Plato believed that this is a dangerous kind of excitement. And that is why Plato was totally against art and literature because Plato believed that if we are going to release our emotions, when a real tragedy happens in our life, we would not be able to control it. On the other hand, Aristotle believed that this kind of a purgation of emotions will definitely help the health of human beings. Because Aristotle believed that if we can release our emotions and cry after watching a tragedy, our mind is becoming clear because these emotions are actually spent over the tragedy. In such a case, when a real-time tragedy hits you, you would be able to control your emotions. This is what Aristotle said, which was totally against Plato's idea. Because Plato believed that this is going to be dangerous because you start crying after watching a tragedy. And when a real tragedy happens in your life, you would not be able to to control your emotions. So this was just the opposite of what Aristotle believed in. So while Plato goes with a negative take on catharsis, Aristotle believed that purgation of emotions which is really healthy for human beings. So now we are moving on to the different types of tragedy. If you check different books you would get innumerable classifications based on tragedy. So I'm just discussing and focusing only on the major types of classifications in tragedy. So the first one indeed is Greek tragedy and this is mostly based on mythology and gods. Now some of the great writers during this period included Sophocles and Euripides and one of the best plays from Greek tragedy would be Oedipus Rex. The second one is Roman tragedy. Now this kind of tragedies did not survive in fact and this originated from the writer Seneca and most of these tragedies were revenge tragedies, having revenge in their themes. Then comes Elizabethan tragedy which you are very familiar with the 16th century during the period of Queen Elizabeth and this was a period of some of the great dramatists including Shakespeare. Now most of the stories or the tragedies based here included noble people with high status. So naturally it would be the story of clergymen, noble people, kings, queens etc. So some of the best writers during this period included Shakespeare, Marlowe etc. And the best examples would be Shakespearean tragedies like Othello, Hamlet, Macbeth etc. Then comes revenge tragedy. Now this was as the title suggests, it is seeking revenge. So this was the same as the Roman tragedy that we learnt now. So this Roman tragedy, the revenge tragedy initiated by Seneca was revived later during this Elizabethan period by some of the writers. So the best example would be Hamlet by William Shakespeare. Then there is Duchess of Malfi by Webster, John Webster. So these are all revenge tragedies where the main theme is revenge or avenging someone. The next one is domestic tragedy and as the title suggests, this includes domestic kind of setting. So this broke the previous traditions. So this is somewhat like the modern kind of drama where you see common people ordinary people just like you and me rather than kings and queens. 
So the best example would be the play A Doll's House, which was written by Ibsen. So many modern writers can be categorized into this domestic tragedy because they speak about the ordinary family conditions, relationship between husband and wife, relationship between the individuals and society, etc. So taking you towards some of the best examples of tragedy, the first one is Dr. Faustus. Maybe you're familiar with the name Christopher Marlowe, who's again a contemporary of William Shakespeare. Then comes Shakespeare's Macbeth. Then comes Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare. Again, King Lear by Shakespeare. Then there is Electra by Sophocles. We mentioned Oedipus Rex. Now this is another play, Electra. Then Coriolanus by William Shakespeare. Now you can see even Mahabharata. Now Mahabharata is basically considered as an epic. And if you remember when we studied how tragedy evolved, we have learned that tragedy evolved from epics. So epic and tragedy, they have got some kind of a connection. So when you say Mahabharata is an epic, at the same time it is a tragedy. Now if you look at some of these plays, you can see, if you look at Macbeth, now, the downfall of Macbeth is created because of a tragic flaw in his nature. Now, so, tragic flaw, as I have mentioned, it is just a minor defect in the character of the hero. If you look at Macbeth here, it is the ambition of Macbeth which creates the trouble. If you look at King Lear, it is the pride of Lear which creates the problem. So, similarly... Each of these characters, they contain a very minor defect which is ultimately leading them to the tragedy. We learn more about this when we discuss tragic hero in detail. So now we are moving on to the next term. This is comedy. So what is the definition of a comedy? A comedy is a dramatic work that is amusing and satirical in tone with a cheerful ending. Happiness or success would be the conclusion of a comedy. So comedy is believed to have been originated in ancient Greece and this originated during the feast of Dionysius, the god of wine, because most of the people would perform as drunk people imitating the god of wine. So this is how comedy began. So now let's take a look at the different types of comedy. So the first one is romantic comedy. Now, romantic comedy, as the name suggests, mainly consisted of love stories. So the best example would be Shakespeare's play, A Midsummer Night's Dream. And in these love stories, sometimes there would be imaginary kind of characters, imaginary kind of places, locations. So it can be something like a fairy tale. It need not be real-time people always. Uh, sometimes demons, imps, angels, they all become a part of this romantic setting. Then comes comedy of humours. Now, comedy of humours were basically character comedies, which means they were based on the characteristics of human beings. And during this period, it was believed that the temperament of individuals were determined by four factors. I would like to take you to another slide. So, the Latin meaning of humour is actually liquid. So it is said that there are four types of people, choleric, sanguine, phlegmatic and melancholic. So this kind of nature was determined by the liquid content of the body. If the yellow bile is more, you would be a choleric person. If the blood part is more, you would be a sanguine person. If the black bile is at a higher level, you would be a melancholic person. So this is how this was determined. So this is character comedy, which means you would be discussing the characteristics of characters. And the best example is the book by Ben Johnson, which is titled as Every Man in His Humor. Then comes comedy of manners. So comedy of manners basically criticized the sophisticated society. Sometimes the vanity, the hypocrisy which existed in the society was made use by the writers in order to criticize the society. 
The best example would be Sheridan's School for Scandal. Then comes sentimental comedy. Now, this is more about the middle class people or the ordinary people, which spoke more about the moral conditions or the moral situations or sometimes the qualities or sometimes the abstract concepts of what is right and what is wrong. And the best example is Richard Steele's The Tender Husband. Then comes tragic comedy. Let's keep tragic comedy apart for the time being. We would come to that uh, sooner. So these are the different types of comedy and some of the examples would be Shakespeare's All is Well That Ends Well. Then there is She Stoops to Conquer written by Oliver Goldsmith. Then again Every Man Out of His Humor by Ben Johnson. Remember the previous example was Every Man in His Humor. Then again As You Like It by William Shakespeare. So by now you would be able to understand the difference between a tragedy and a comedy. Now, the great poet Byron has suggested that all tragedies are finished by a death, while all comedies are ended by a marriage. Now, moving on, the next one is tragic comedy. So, as the name suggests, a tragic comedy is a blend of both tragic and comic elements to lighten the overall mood of the play. It is a serious play that ends on a happy note. So, in ancient Greece, these characters, tragic characters and comic characters were actually different distinguished or differentiated with the use of masks because those wearing a mask with a smile would be holding a comic character and those with a serious faced mask would be carrying out a tragic character. So tragic comedy again originated in ancient Greece and it is believed that it was a Roman dramatist Plotus who actually came forward with this kind of a blend. Now, some of the best examples here would be William Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice, again Shakespeare's The Winter's Tale, and again The Tempest. So, all these plays, they have a blend of tragic and comic features. Now, a few tragic comedies were actually enacted in Greece thousands of years before at a time when the term tragic comedy was not even present. And that is why it is said that this actually originated in Greece. But this was not given a name then. But it was later given a name by Plautus from Rome. So with this we come to the end of the first part of module 1. There are more terms which need to be discussed. So this would be continued in part two. So thank you very much for your patient listening. If you have any doubts, please do not hesitate to connect with me in my email ID. So thank you very much. Thank you.